a majority of Supreme Court justices seemed to agree Wednesday that the abundance of private information available about Americans in the digital age might require new restraints on government's ability to access it. In the specific case before the court, these new limits could require law enforcement officials to prove more to a judge about suspected criminal wrongdoing before they are able to collect cell tower records, which can provide a detailed record of a person's whereabouts. But the justices indicated that the explosion of digital information, which is transforming Americans' expectation of privacy, is raising a wide range of legal issues. This is an open box, Justice Stephen G. Breyer said, We know not where we go. Supreme Court confronts how technology impacts U.S. Notion of privacy Justice Sonia Sotomayor was the most insistent on protections. Most Americans, I think, still want to avoid Big Brother, she said, while also acknowledging the public's increasing reliance on the modern technology that makes surveillance easier. Deputy Solicitor General Michael R. Dreben said that the government's use of cell tower records, an important tool for solving crime, did not violate an individual's constitutional protection against unreasonable searches. The records are kept by an individual's carrier, he noted, and in disclosing them the company is acting as a potential witness to a crime. But Nathan F. Wessler, a lawyer for the American Civil Liberties Union, said the records serve as a time machine for law enforcement to reconstruct a person's minute-by-minute movements. Wessler represents Timothy Carpenter, who is serving a 116-year sentence for his role in armed robberies in 2010 and 2011 at Radio Shack and T-Mobile stores in and around Detroit as part of a gang stealing smartphones. One of the men arrested identified Carpenter as the ringleader who typically organized the robberies, supplied the guns and acted as a lookout. Authorities asked cell phone carriers for 127 days of records that would show Carpenter's use of his phone. Such records indicate where a cell phone establishes connections with a specific cell tower and give a fair representation of the vicinity of the user. Wessler claimed new technology can be specific to an area about half the size of the justice's grand courtroom. In Carpenter's case, the mass of information showed his phone at 12,898 locations, including close to where the robberies occurred when they took place. Carpenter's attorneys say that the government's actions violated their clients' rights under the Fourth Amendment, which protects against unreasonable searches. Authorities should have had to convince a judge that there was probable cause to get the records, they say. Instead, under the Stored Communications Act, authorities had to meet a lesser standard, that there were reasonable grounds to believe that the records sought are relevant and material to an ongoing criminal investigation. The government contends that its actions fit squarely with the Supreme Court's prevailing precedents. In the 1979 decision in Smith v.